that shows you right there that baptism and belief are one thing. If you believe and are baptized, you will be saved. If you don't believe, you will be condemned. Belief is tied in with baptism, but not belief means you get neither. So, baptism of the Holy Spirit is immediate upon belief. There's no thing you need to do like speak in tongues like at Oral Roberts University or any of these other crazy universities that say if you don't speak in tongues, you don't have the Holy Spirit. It's insane. You are marked with the Holy Spirit the moment that you believe, and that is positional, and it says in Ephesians, what, 2-7, the moment you believe, you are positionally taken to the heavenly places. That is a guarantee. Same thing. That's right. We are there already in God's economy. We are, and as I said last night, we are. The reality of it is future, but the actuality of it is right now. Okay, if you believe in Jesus. So if you don't believe in Jesus, anybody in here? Can't help you. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, please. I am Joseph, your brother. He said, the one who you sold into Egypt, and now don't be worried or angry with yourself for selling me here because God has sent me ahead of you to preserve life. Okay, this is a really interesting verse. What did he say? Read that again. God what? God sent me ahead of you to preserve life. Who sold Joseph? The brothers. The brothers. That's right, okay? And yet he says God did it. God and our free will are associated in a very interesting way. God does not interfere with free will, but He allows us to make free will decisions, and He, when He allows them, He can get the credit for those free will decisions. God sent me here ahead of you. Okay, do you see how this works? In other words, if He doesn't want something to happen, He would have prevented it from happening. But He allowed them to make that free will choice. In other words, He would have just he could have whipped up a storm and had Joseph turn around and go back to his dad. I can't find my brother. So there was a big storm. I had to come back home. Right? But God allowed him to get all the way to his brothers knowing that his brothers would do this. Therefore, God is the one that directed him to Egypt in the ultimate sense. He could have restrained it any way. He could have had him, a, a, you know, a, a caravan of uh, people, you know. We could make up a million possibilities to keep him from getting down to his brothers. But God allowed it. Even though his brother, and it doesn't negate his brother's guilt. As I said, our free will decisions are our free will decisions. We accept Jesus or we don't accept Jesus. One or the other, that's all there is to it. But God can direct things in a certain way so that the outcome is inevitable. Okay? Based on the decision he knows that we will make. Or he can say, I don't want that decision to be made, and so I'm going to keep it from ever happening. The, it, it, very interesting to see that because he is attributing something to God that was done by his brothers. His brothers did evil, and yet God allowed that evil for a much greater purpose. It does not mean that he authored the evil. As I said, he could have stopped it anywhere along the way. He could have done anything he wanted because he is God and he is the creator. He allowed that evil to occur. God does not author evil, but he understands that it can have a great purpose. Jesus Christ hung on a cross. He did not make, he didn't take the nails and pound them into his son's hands. He allowed people to do that and he could have stopped it anywhere along the way, but he allowed it for a greater purpose. It, it, it's hard for us to get our minds around that. And it, there are times where I think, you know, what about this and what about this? And you have to say, well, it was the Lord's will. You know, you're back here now for a purpose. He could have said, no, I, I want you to stay in China for whatever reason. So whatever goes through your mind that thinks, I wish that didn't happen, or why did that happen, or Hey, listen, God is sovereign and he will allow things to happen because there is something better than what the, the short-term outcome come, it happens. Okay, So just keep that in mind with everything. Even your beard getting torn off at 4,000 RPM. There is a better purpose for it. I, and like I said, how do I know I wouldn't have gone home that night We light a, a, a candle, and uh, not a candle, that we have a, um, what do you call it, one of those uh, oil lamps. And I light one of those every night. Yeah, how do I know I wouldn't have put my face over and got my whole face burned up? I have no idea. So how can I be upset about something like that? Just that's the way it is. And everything is that way. But most of us don't take the time. And I'm not talking about in this class. I'm talking about most of us in, in humanity. Find a reason to blame God for the problem. 
We find a reason to say, why did God allow this person to get chopped up by the boat motor? Ooh. They didn't have to get into that boat and go, you know, uh, uh, water skiing. God allowed them to do that. But something better will come because of it. I guarantee it. We may not ever understand it in this life, but in the end, we will see a perfect plan. Um, somebody asked about uh, bad happening. Uh, oh, Saturday night. They said, well, we were talking about basically the same thing. And immediately, turn to Isaiah 57.1. And this, if you have any question in your life, why bad happens, why people die early, Isaiah 57, verse 1. This came right to my mind. I read it, and she seemed fully content with the answer. Isaiah 57, 1 says, The righteous perishes, and no man takes it to heart. Merciful men are taken away, while no one considers that the righteous is taken away from evil. Okay? In other words, a little child dies. Okay? Oh, why did God allow this to happen? How do we know? As a matter of fact, somebody else in that class said, I had a younger sibling die. Or was it a cousin? Anyway, somebody in their family died, and it turned out much better than it would have in this person's life because of the father, whoever the father was, and the way he, I don't know. If, they didn't say what the deal was. Maybe it was sexually abusive. Maybe he turned into a drug addict. I don't know. But that child was taken away because the evil would have been much greater in that child. But we don't look at that. Oh, the child died. and I, you know, We look at everything from our own perspective and we don't take the time to think that there was a better reason for this and the Bible says right there in Isaiah 57 1 that is what happens people die you know and it doesn't mean they have to be saved they could be an unsaved person but their life probably would have been even worse later and then they would have received greater punishment Jesus said you know he who knows to do good and doesn't do it the greater will receive many blows and all that the more sin you heap up the more punishment you're gonna get God is even merciful to people that are going to hell. I'm certain of that. I, I, you know, that's just the way God is. He is infinitely merciful. But we don't look at it that way. Look, we look at everything from our own limited perspective. So if we can take verses like this and what happened with Joseph in the verse we just read, keep that in context. Really, really important in our lives. Yes? I think it's even uh, more demonstrative than losing it. Baby, yeah. when somebody you love commits suicide. Oh, and yes. Usually there's something that will work out within your life to show you that uh, you that, that was a, a necessary That's right. step that, in God's plan. That's right. That's exactly. Dave, have a great afternoon. Thanks, All right. See you later. Uh, you, you know, and I, I can't tell you how many people in the past six months have emailed me saying this person committed suicide and, you know, what about, my, you know, that's a tough one, but, you know, you got to give them an answer. So the first thing I always ask was, did they know Jesus? That's, if they didn't, there's really nothing I can tell yeah. the family to help them. But, you know, I can give them comforting words from the Bible, but nothing about salvation. I never mention it. But if, I, if they are 100% certain that person was saved, man, I can give them verses all day long. Don't worry about it. They're, the first question the family always asks, I, it, without fail, they always ask the same thing. Can he still go to heaven? Mm -hmm. If he was saved, he is already there. Hate to tell you, he is already there. You know what? He, he's not going to get a reward for what he did. But you know what? We're not responsible for everything that we do in life. Sometimes chemical imbalances come up. Physical, mental imbalances come up that we just can't control. You know, and you know, sometimes people allow themselves to get into such a depressed state that they forget that they actually are redeemed and they can get through it. And what does it say in uh, 2 Peter 1 9? It says, you know, uh, uh, people actually forget that they were saved. And, you know, that's just the way it is. And you're right. Somebody commits suicide, there is usually something that will turn out for the better in the end. But it's hard to see that, especially when, you know, he did what? You know, you almost can't grasp it. How could that person do that? I've known them my whole life or whatever, but you're right. Absolutely. Okay, please, go ahead. I think you're in spy. Except they had a view to preserve life. Oh, yes. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there will be five more years without plowing or harvesting. God sent me ahead of you to establish you as a remnant within the land and to keep you alive by a great deliverance. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it was not you who sent me here, but God. And they probably still can't get their mind around it. He said it twice now. But God sent me here. 
You think you did, but God sent me here. He didn't actively do it, but passively by allowing the brothers to make that choice and by not having him diverted in any way from showing up at his brothers up in Dothan or wherever it was, God allowed it. He sent him there. Okay? God, he has made me. Therefore, it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler over all the land of Egypt. And that's, uh, once again, a parallel of Jesus. He sat down at the right hand of the Father. All authority has been granted to me on heaven and in earth. Er in heaven and on earth, whatever. And it, it, he is a picture right now of Jesus having all of the authority of the greatest kingdom on earth at the time, which is Egypt. Okay, so you have all authority over your domain in CSDK. Oh uh, yeah, my my teeny little domain. I'm second only to Hidako and four Chihuahuas. And um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I. But other than them, I have all authority. Okay. Absolutely. And actually, last night we had. Um, we, we've got an ant problem in the house. These, um, they're, they're the uh, flying ants. They're not termites, but anyway, they, they've been coming into the house. They're getting in somewhere, and we actually had to sleep downstairs last night, so I don't have authority over them either. Macy's was out last week to take care of it. He said it'll be a week and a half before they start dying off, and it's been five days, so I can't wait for the next six to be finished up. But yeah, I, even the ants, I don't have authority over them up here. <laughs> yeah. I'm, She's okay, yeah. You know what? Knucklehead, and I didn't know she did this. We ate at Millie's yesterday, and she saved half of her omelet and half of her, um, uh, what do you call it, a blueberry pancake, and she brought it in here. She had it with her for, what, three hours? Church? And then she went home and ate it for lunch. Not smart. So, you know what? It was just, she, she shouldn't have done that. If you have something that's perishable, pancake is one thing, but to take and church for three hours yeah an egg so anyway but she was all right but yeah she went home and she she uh she talked to the uh yeah. the, the john for a while had, had a yelling conversation with it apparently oh boy uh, yeah poor thing all right go ahead rule and ruler over all the land of egypt return quickly to my father and say to him this is what your son joseph says God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me without delay. You can settle in the land of Goshen and be near me. You, your children and grandchildren, your sheep, cattle, and all that you have. There I will sustain you, for there will be five more years of famine. Otherwise, you, your household, and everything you have will become destitute. Mm -hmm. Look. Your eyes and my brother Benjamin's eyes can see that it is I, Joseph, who am speaking to you. Tell my father all about my glory in Egypt and all of, about all you have seen and bring my father here quickly. Okay, so if you think of this kind of an, a, a, a parallel, not a great one again, but it's kind of a parallel, I have all authority. I have all glory. He says, tell my father. Well, in this context, who is Jesus' father? It's Israel, okay, the people of Israel. He came from Israel. I'm not talking about his, his divine father. I'm talking about him coming from the people of Israel. And he is calling the people of Israel to submit to his authority and to, to live in his presence under his care okay so once again you see this this parallel a parallel is a parallel if it was any more precise and it wouldn't be a parallel it would be the same account so these things have to be somewhat veiled but the Jewish people will someday read these things and say look at what we have missed all of this time we have missed this but it's not that time yet it's coming quickly though I I was kind of hoping we'd default on this thing and America would go down the tubes because then if that was the case, we would certainly be that much closer. It's still going to happen, but I'm, I'm not a doom, doomsday person, but at the same time, I don't want to hold things off. I just yeah. would like to see things go quicker because I just want, I said this last night, I just want to be with the Lord. I could not care about where we are or about this life. I just want to be with Him. That's my big hope and desire. So, anyway. I'm happy with that. Okay, here. I got something here. We can take... <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, go ahead, please. The world 